All right, so in this video, we're checking out the Happy Model Mob Light 6 and 7. So we're basically the same drone with the same parts, except they have a different frame and props. So the 6 comes with the 65 millimeter setup here, uh, 31 millimeter propellers, and the 7 comes with the 40 millimeter bi-bladed props and the 75 millimeter frame. Uh, they come with the same all-in-one flight controller board here. So this is basically a reduced size and reduced weight all on one board that has the video transmitter, the receiver, the flight controller, and uh, the 4 one ACs all on a single board here. And it's called the Diamond F4 uh, version 1.0. And kind of see, I put a picture up here with that labeling. It's very tiny. This whole board is really super tiny. And here's the bottom. And you can see the USB port is on the side now and not in the back. Still comes with the same PH 2.0 connector as before. The mod, the the motors are new. They're these new Unibel style motors, um, 0802, 19,000 kV on both of them. And uh, the camera on here is the Runcam Nano 3 with the new updated lens, which a lot of people don't like. Now, the production version is going to come with the Nano 4 Lite version of the Runcam camera. So it'll, it'll be pretty similar to this, but I think they're saying that the weight will be reduced by another two tenths of a gram, I believe. So. You have to account for that in the weight that you're going to see here. So I flew these on the stock tune, stock everything. I didn't change anything. So you guys can get a feel for what it's like um, out of the box without any modifications. Uh, the batteries that are, came with it here are the 651S. I'm not sure who makes this alien. This is a new brand. High volt battery, of course. Um, pretty big. It's a little bit bigger than the 450. About the same size and dimensions as the 450, a little bit longer. And then you have the uh, 300. This is the same one that came with the Mobi the 6 uh, from a while back. And so this is get right into the comparisons. This is all about reduction of weight to gain performance. So that's all the trade-off is here, is when you want to um, gain more performance, you got to strip it down. So this is not really, there's no rocket science here. <laughs> it's, um, you know, basically... If you want to get a drone to be faster, you just strip it down, take as much stuff off of it as you can, make it as minimalistic as possible, and uh, the reduction of weight is going to give you more performance and more flight time. That's basically what you got here. You know, when you look compare it to the uh, the Mobula 6 here, so this one here is coming in at 19.9 uh, grams, so about 20 grams on the nose, and then the Mob. Uh, Mob 6 here, Mob Light 6, coming in at uh, 18, 18.3, yeah, 18.4, so it's about uh, 1.6 grams less than the, if you take the account the new camera, it's probably about like, like 18.2, so maybe 1.8 1, 1 grams less than the Mobula Light or the Mobula 6. And then if you look at the uh, Mob Light 7, this is coming in at uh, 19.8 grams. Um, so let's just uh, put this on here with the battery. So the battery, the 650, is um, 15.7 grams. Wow, almost weighs as much as the drone. And then with the drone and the battery together, we're coming in at 35.6 grams. And the Mob Light 6, again, about 18.4 grams. And then with the 300 milliamp hour light, but we're coming in at about 26 grams flying weight. So unfortunately, this only comes in the 19,000 kV version. Uh, I would have really have liked to seen this to have the 25,000 kV uh, motors, like the one I have on the, uh, the Mobula 6. This has the uh, 25,000 kV uh, motors, and this actually performs better, but of course at, at the cost of lower flight time because you're really draining the battery much faster. Now, um, of this 19,000 kV motor, you're going to be draining the battery lower, but you could get even more performance on 
the um, higher kV motor, plus with the less weight, you're going to gain back that uh, lost flight time from the uh, Mobula 6. So um, I would like to see a 25,000 kV motor version in the future. Um, the props here were not sitting flush with the bell, as you see here. I did push them down all the way. Um, so they did come from the factory, they didn't push them all the way down. So make sure you push all the props in all the way, otherwise they're going to be sticking up. And then any of that um, little bit of prop that's sticking up, if it you crash, it might bend the motor shaft. So you want to push those props on all the way. Same thing for the, the Moblite 7. The props weren't all the way down. That's because this whole this hold in the gulf is the props. These are prototype propellers. I'm told that the production propellers will have the hole all the way through and the prop will sit flush with the bell. Like I try to push this one down here, you can see it didn't go all the way down. This one here compared to this one over here, this is all the way down. So whenever you hit something, it, there's going to be leverage that's going to might, that might bend that motor shaft. So something to be aware of in a crash. And you know, it is pretty light, so there's not a lot of inertia and for that mass to cause a lot of damage, but you can still cause damage to frame, could possibly break. And they do, they have accounted for that part at least, and they have included extra frames in each of these packages. So the Moblite 7 will come with an extra uh, 75 millimeter frame, and same with the Moblite 6 that comes with an extra frame, just in case you break your frame. However, I'm not as concerned about the frame breaking so much as this exposed flight controller and Bad news to report here, I had a small crash, nothing really big, I wasn't really flying that hard, I just basically made a wrong turn and ended up flipped over onto some small rocks. And I think I might have knocked one of these small components off, it doesn't look like there's any damage on the board, but as soon as I crashed, um, yeah, it just stopped working. And I thought, well, maybe it's the USB port, it's not that either, it doesn't power up off the USB or the battery. Yeah, the board just completely doesn't work anymore. So that is the trade-off here that you're going to make for more performance. So if you strip it down, take off stuff, reduce the weight to get more performance, you are sacrificing durability. And so now with this sort of setup here with the low profile camera and no canopy and this being as stripped down as possible, they um, have exposed the flight controller board and it's totally exposed as you can see and apparently I must have landed on something and might have knocked a component off or something or damaged or moved or something like that I'm not sure exactly why but yeah it's um that doesn't work anymore and uh, that's the that's the benefit of having the you know the whatever is one and a half gram two gram canopy here it does protect that can the, the main board here from getting damaged in a crash and this thing's been crashed quite a bit still totally fine uh, but i think i flew this about five times and then the fifth fifth flight uh minor crash uh caused the board to die unfortunately so yeah um i won't be flying this one anymore but yeah i'm gonna keep trying to fly this one for future videos um few more things here uh important to note so again to reduce the weight they've um removed all the connectors for the motors so no more motor connectors and no, no more connections on the boards that cuts down the weight and this new board here does have some pretty big solder pads for the wires compared to the standard board so you can kind of see there so this board is interesting it's, it's going to be 1s only it's a 5 amp um, ESC bursting 6 pretty typical but do not plug this on 2s it definitely won't take 2s uh, because all the components are really packed in tightly here Again, to to do you know to get the reduction in weight, um, you are sacrificing durability. So I think that if you stress this board out a lot, so for example, you know I was thinking maybe you know, if you're considering on the seven here going to like a three bladed propeller, that may cause too much amp draw and cause the ECs to pop. So be aware of that. And also, you know, if you crash hard enough, and or if you're doing turtle mode, and you just you're, you're causing a big voltage spike into the board. That can cause this to fry because you're just you're just compacting more of these components into a smaller space. There's nowhere for that voltage to go or that heat to escape. So um, it is more vulnerable to a lot of the same typical stuff that happens when you crash. So be aware of that. Um, another thing on this frame here, I think they're going to be changing this because you can see the USB port's a little bit blocked there by the battery tray. So 
they're probably going to fix that later. Also, you can see my frame is totally warped and I'm not sure what is causing that. Now they did, because of the way this frame is, it wasn't really designed for this board here. And, and, and you can see the USB port is butted up against that little brace here. They had to raise up the board with these higher um, grommets here. So the board's actually even more exposed here, as you can see, compared to the Mobby the, with the Mob Light 6 where the board's more recessed. So yeah, um, I would suggest putting like a piece of foam over this, like a light piece of foam, something very light. You don't need much just to give it a little bit of protection. Um, Cause you know, if you're going fast and you hit something, that board is very exposed, especially if they hit a branch or tree, something like that, it's gonna, you know, cause some problems. So put a little piece of foam or something over here, just to cover up these components. So that's gonna probably save you the, the problem that I had where I, I messed up the board, or if you crash and you land on a rock like I did or something like that, then your, your board will be saved if there's a little bit, little bit of covering over here. I've uh, suggested to have you model that they include that from the factory. It's um, won't probably won't add more than a tenth of a gram or maybe two tenths of a gram at the most. But again, if you're looking for the, you know, the most performance possible, you're going to want to strip things down to the bare bones. And you could even, you know, strip down some of this camera here or the camera mount here. You know, all this TP stuff here is adding weight. Maybe get rid of it completely and just go with a fixed angle camera, just glue it to the side of the prop guards here. You could do something like that. I mean, there's a lot of things you can get do to reduce the weight even more. And I was thinking maybe uh, cutting off the battery tray on the bottom on the seven and, and then pushing the flight controller down all the way. And then uh, that would expose you. You can't then, at that point you can't put the battery on the bottom, but then at that point you can put uh, the battery on top here and there is a screw hole here and here. Maybe you go over band this way. And then if you put the battery over here, that would cover up the flight controller board. That might protect it as well. And it's um, one way of protecting the um, flight controller if you use the battery on top, something like that. You know, there's a lot of different, way, different ways you can get creative and still keep the weight really low while still protecting stuff. So there's room for improvement here. Obviously they haven't, you know, done, uh, optimized this completely, but yeah, it's, you can tell there's, I don't know what else you could reduce. You could reduce, you could change the screws out. Maybe use plastic screws, but then you know when the motor pops off, you know you can have uh, uh, the thread at the, the end of the screw stuck inside the bottom of the motor, stuff like that. You know, um, the other thing that I don't really, I'm not really thrilled about is the way this whole camera mounting system works. You can see it just kind of moves around, and you have to constantly adjust it, and the angle will change on you. The angle can change via this little strap here so you can move this card back and forth. You could use that hole there and um, basically slide it forward or back like this. So I'm bending the frame here. And then that'll give you a little bit more camera angle if you do that. If you want to like really go fast then you're going to need a lot more camera angle to see something like that. So I don't know. I'm a little bit, that's mixed feelings on the whole camera mounting system. I think there's room for improvement there. Uh, you can see you can go also down like this and go, uh, if you want to go slow, you have a nice flat angle like that. But you know, when you crash, this is, as you can see, it's pretty loose. It's going to move around. You may need to readjust that. Um, if you have, have never crashed, come back and fly back to yourself and fix the angle or something like that. So I think that's, uh, really that's all there is. Um, it's running like 357, nothing fancy, no RPM filter, nothing like that. It's got a pit tune. It's got the same pit tune on both of these. It seems to fly fine on 357. So I would recommend not changing it at all. Just leave the firmware the way it is. And, and unless you really know what you're doing, um, you wanna go with the RPM filter and, and all that stuff, you know, go for it if you know what you're doing. But if you don't, just leave it the way it comes out of the, out of the box. It flies fine on those PIDs as you can see here in the flight footage. I think that's all I gotta say for this, you know. Again, basically it's a sacrifice, you know, if you want um, more performance, you're going to be sacrificing durability. And this is basically what these models encompass is that trade-off. So if you're willing to make that trade-off, then you're going to get more performance. It's going to be faster and you'll have more flight time again with some of those penalties that I mentioned in the video. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.